to the Fermented World Brewing Channel. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be brewing some Vikings blood, but with a slight variation from the recipe that I've done before. So, normally for a, a double batch or a single batch of this, single batch we'd use two packets of cherries, double batch obviously four packets of cherries, but we're not doing the four packets of cherries today for the double batch because I forgot to pick some up yesterday and I can't be bothered to go in back into Beast to get some. So, we are going to, instead, we're going to put some dried cherries in the primary fermentation as well as secondary. Now, hopefully this will balance whatever they don't give because now as nice as these cherries are to eat and to ferment with, they don't really give all that much to it apart from a bit of color because you ferment absolutely everything out of them. There's no sugars left. There might be a slight bit of flavor left. Uh, and a bit of aroma, but you you, you know when it's, it's fermented all out, there's no real cherryness left. I say, well, I say that, but there is, but there also isn't. There's like an anti-cherry, if that's even a bloody thing. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and bolster that by using some dry cherries. I've got a big bag of it because I'm going to be brewing this for years to come, I reckon. Um, this is a kilogram bag. And we're only going to use 100 grams of this in the ferment and then another 100 grams in secondary no 200 grams in secondary sorry because it's a double batch so first things first what we need to do is we need to get a fruit in there and we just need to mash it up a little bit got some skizzers here somewhere now a cream top probably wasn't the best color to do a Viking's blood with, but you know, that's life. And I didn't open that bag properly. These are store bought, fro frozen and thawed out. Um, if you can get your hands on some fresh ones, do so, because it will be much nicer, I'm sure. Um, but also be careful of the insects that uh, lay their larvae in there. A friend of mine um, keeps offering me some of his from his garden. But every time we get there, we crack one open and there's a little maggot in there. A little wiggly worm. And um, well, he's actually a vegan. And when he took a bite, you should have seen his face. When he saw this thing wriggling around in there. <laughs> Oh, bless him. But no, we, did, we didn't eat them in the end. Uh, I didn't take any. So the plan this year is to use some of his. But what we're going to do is I'm going to provide him with some of these um, white cover bags. So they can still get the sun they need and the oxygen they need. But no little critters can get in there to lay eggs and get their wiggly worms in there. So I don't normally do this part either, but I'm going to mash these up a little bit just to make sure that every single one is kind of broken up and we're going to get the, the best kind of extract out of this. So I'm going to speed this a little bit up because it may take some time. Okay, so I had to change my t-shirt because I did get spots of splattered all over it. As you can see from that picture, it's squirted everywhere. So as you can see, I've had to change my t-shirt. Uh, I did get bits all over it, um, so I'm gonna have to wash that out. Now, we do seem to have a lot more juice than we would normally have. So juicing them like that, crushing them down, does seem to actually help. Um, what I used to do is I just squeeze them in the bag but some of them obviously weren't popped open, so we weren't getting the juices and the flavors out of that. So that's where we're at at the moment. We've just got a bucket with a load of fruit in. To the bucket with fruit in, we are going to add some hot water. Now, I've not really got a way of gauging this, but I want about a liter and a half. So I probably need it to be about there when I've finished. That'll do. 
I don't want to overdo it because I'm not using tap water again today. Because I've got some bottled water that I need using up. Uh, so we're going to be using that instead. So to the hot water, we're going to be adding our honey. So these are just a guideline. You can do this however you want. You can add whatever you want, make it your own. That is absolutely amazing. I love it when people do that. I'd like it if people come back to me and said, hey guys, I tried this, but I put a cinnamon stick in it. And you know what? It, it just set it all off. And then I'll come back and I'll brew it again with a cinnamon stick in and I'll see like, yeah, that was really, really good. And then, you know, just converse with the people as to what's cracking off, you know, and what people like and what people don't like. If there's any ingredients I use that you don't like, don't put them in. Substitute it for something you do like. Right, so we're gonna get some honey in. I'm gonna speed this up because it takes forever. Tell you what, I'll put one in and I'll just continue chatting cod while I put it in. And then I'll speed up the others because it just takes quite a while for it to go through like, and it can be a bit tedious waiting and having to find things to talk about. So, like that. And we're going to speed the other ones up. Okay, so we've got our honey in there now. We've got the cherries in there. We're now going to add the dried cherries, which we're going to be doing 100 grams of. Just as a tester to see whether 100 grams of it does kind of balance out not having the extra cherries in there. And I'll soon find out once this batch is complete and ready and my mate tries it, because this is for him. I do this. Uh, he just absolutely loves the Viking blood and he's probably ran out by now. These cherries are already pitted, which means they've had the stones taken out. I was saying, huh, I brew this one for him. Um, oh, that's so nice. Mm. So nice. Good. So. 100 grams of the cherries of dryness. They're going in. This glass was sterilized, of course. And we now need to add, top it up with some water. That is pretty much all the ingredients that are going in it, apart from some yeast nutrients, once we've topped up with water, because it's a bit warm at the moment. It's at about 30 degrees and that's a little bit too warm. So we're gonna to be topping this up to the nine and a half litre mark or just above it, because we will lose a little bit to the um, fruits, but that's not too much of a bother, really. And as I say, I'm just using up some bottled water that I've had for a while. Um, just needs using up. Also, I don't have enough to get me to the, the mark, so I am gonna have to use a little bit of tap water, which is what I'd normally use. So that's no bother at all, really. And if anything, it'll help cool it down a little. about the mark of nine litres which is pretty much two gallon. We're going to add some yeast nutrients. Which is one 
teaspoon per gallon. Now, I follow this person on TikTok, and I think they're actually a meadery uh, because they're doing really big batches. Now, so they did something interesting. They aerated their mead on day three. So I messaged them and I says, well, what's the process of this and why would you do it? When I was, when I was started brewing mead, I was told you literally add it all together, throw it in a bucket, chuck your yeast on, and then you do not open it unless 100% necessary. And he says, or she, I'm not sure whether it was a made up or not. Yes, that's what we were told as well. But he then told me about, I'm going to say he, because I think it's he. And then he told me about the um, reason why they do it. And it's because as the yeast consumes the sugar, it produces CO2. Now, CO2 is something that will hamper it if there's not enough oxygen in there as well. So if there's more CO2 than there is oxygen, the yeast will store. Um, so that's why they do it. And they also pitch more nutrients as well. So I'm going to try that on this one um, as a bit of a experiment as to see what's cracking off with that. Um, because I've got a fresh batch going, um, I can't really do it with the rose hip mead, as that's already past the three day mark, I believe. Yeah, that was started on the 22nd, that's way past it. So, in three days after this is done, we're going to come back and have a quick look at this. But for now, we're going to mix that honey in and those nutrients in. <laughs> Okay, so that's had a thorough mix, a really, really thorough mix. Um, where is my hydrometer? <laughs> I know I've literally washed it. That's it. Stood by the sink like a gentleman. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a hydrometer reading and we're going to see when all these cherries get out of my way I might actually be able to pick some more. I'm going to see what gravity we've got to start with and then we'll calculate at the end of fermentation how much is fermented and we shall go from there. So that's at the standard amount that it should be for how much honey I've put in, which is good. I like it. It will give us a nice beverage if it goes up fully dry. And I'll tell you what we didn't put in, a cup of tea. I am going to brew a cup of tea and put it in for some tannins. Um, and yes, I should have done that beforehand, but totally forgot. Should have done that when I had the kettle, which is over there with some water still in it. It may change the gravity, so we will be back to double check that. I'm gonna let the tea brew for about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna remove all this stuff and cover this over so that no insects or dog hairs can get in there. Which is a which is a problem sometimes dog hairs even though they're only really really short because he's a staffy it's um they just get everywhere so we'll cover that over with that and that over with that and we shall be back once the tea's ready so i'm back and it was a little bit longer than the anticipated 20 minutes but we are now ready to Put in this cup of tea. Just black tea, water, jobs of fish. That was about 30 minutes. I decided to take the dog out in between. Two birds, one stone. And this is gonna ramp it up a little bit um, in volume, but we should be okay. I'm not worried, because it's like marginal. Probably an extra, maybe two or 300 mils. 
Now we need to mix that back in. So I need my mixing stick. Okay. Now then let's take the hydrometer reading. We have diluted it a bit, so we do expect a bit of a different reading. The last reading was 1.1 1 .1 0. So 110. In short terms. And in that time that it's taken that. 30 minutes, it may have even released a bit of the sugars from the cherries. But again, I don't know. We're on the 100 mark, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. So yeah, we're good. We are the good. Now we're gonna pick some yeast. One full packet will do. So let's just sprinkle this yeast on along, nice and even if possible. It doesn't really matter much because we're going to be mixing it in. And we mix it in. To do now is to pop the lid on with an airlock, close it up, write down what is in there, and if you haven't done this before, make yourself a note of the recipe if you add anything extra in, or just make a note anyway so that when you come back again, you don't need to then watch this video again to then get the recipe. So, just a VB for Vikings Blood, uh, the date is 29th of the 2nd. 24, the original gravity was 1.100, which is nice. And yeah, we'll see what the dry cherries bring to the Vikings blood in the ferment. If anything, they may not. Now in the secondary part, where we stop the fermentation, add more honey to sweeten it up, and then add a bit more fruit as well, dried fruit. In that part, they bring so much flavor back to the mead because this will probably ferment completely out so that it's dry. There'll be no residual sugar left at all, which is why we back sweeten and add more fruit. And then the small amount of fruit that we do add, the 100 grams we do add per uh, liter, is just going to make such a difference. It's going to bring back all that natural cherry flavor. It's going to bring back the natural sugars so we won't need as much honey. And it's just going to be banging. Can't wait to see how it goes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.